Originally, this was just going to be me giving my quick thoughts on all the games I played this year, but that's boring. So this is a game show now, starring you. So here's the rules. I'm going to give you a brief snippet of my thoughts on a game I played this year, but I'm not going to tell you what the game is. That's your job. You gotta guess the game I played based on the vague descriptions I give. After I give my descriptions though, a 10 second timer will appear on screen. During this time, some hints will show up on screen. I won't read them aloud though. There will be three hints, one after another, and they will progressively get more helpful. Or at least, I tried. If you don't want hints, then just listen for the 10 ticks or skip ahead 10 seconds when the timer appears. But they're there for those who want them. I won't reveal the results until the end of the video, so make sure you write your answers down if you want to play along. Finally, after the results, there's going to be a bonus question, so stick around if you want 10 more seconds of content. So let me just clarify a few things before we begin. The list starts with what I played at the beginning of the year and ends with the most recent game I've played. What I played this year does not necessarily equate to what games came out this year. In fact, most, but not all, of the games on this list are from previous years. I'm not going to explicitly mention which games are sequels, nor if I played multiple games in the same series. Even though I technically played them this year, I'm not including games like Smash Ultimate or Duel Links. I'm only including games that I started this year or that have a definitive ending which I got to this year. Games that I started and finished this year, or that I started and have no ending, will be in white. Games that I started a previous year and finished this year will be in purple. Games that I played through a previous year, but I replayed this year, will be in blue. Games that I started this year, but consciously decided not to finish, will be in red. The music that I use for this video will be from games I didn't play this year, so that's not a hint. I'm gonna try not to spoil anything from these games. Spoilers are subjective and some people do think that certain elements are more spoilery than others, but I'm gonna try my best not to spoil anything, or at least keep things ambiguous. Any other information of note, I'll give you during my descriptions. Game 1 Its dungeons kinda suck, but the exploration in this game is on a level that I haven't felt since Breath of the Wild. The core gameplay of this game was the best part. I feel like every change that the developers made did a good job of keeping the game hard, but fair. The only thing I didn't like was the level scaling. That just kinda defeats the purpose of the high-risk, high-reward mechanics of the game. The story wasn't great, but I actually do like the implications of each ending. I just wish we got to see more of what the game's world is like after each ending. Game 2 this is one of those weird games that I enjoy watching more than I do playing. I've constructed my own deck and have had fun customizing and using it, but I honestly prefer watching matches online and seeing how they play out. Turns last a while in this game and good matches can get pretty long, so watching a replay play out fairly quickly is much more satisfying to me than having to wait after every move I make. Plus it means I can't make this plays. Game 3 This game is kind of a unique case for this list. Technically I started this game a previous year and finished it this year, but that was because the next part of the game hadn't been released then. In fact, the full game still isn't out and won't be for a while. You could even count this as a replay since I replayed the first part before moving on to the second. I'm counting it as being started and finished this year because I mainly played it for the new content. Game 4 I really wanted to like this game. I was digging the music, I liked the game's setting, and I could tell this game was going to be charming. But it's just too archaic for me. I took only a couple of steps outside of my house before getting mauled to death by a dog. I might come back to it eventually to see if I can get past the first town, but that's not going to be anytime soon. Plus, apparently there's a massive difficulty spike later in the game that involves a mountain? I don't know what's up with that. Game 5 I prefer when JRPGs don't try to take place in a medieval fantasy world. This one isn't winning any awards for me, but it's still really good and I would love to see it expanded upon. It's weird and wacky in a way that I like. There's sort of a childlike wonder and goofiness to the game. The battle system isn't bad, and I'm glad random encounters don't exist for the most part. It's definitely not perfect, but it's a fun and charming combination of elements that work pretty well together.
Game 6. This game got a re-release recently and I decided to give it a try now that I could find a physical copy, as I've heard a lot of praise for the game series. I usually don't have an interest in visual novels unless you add some sort of more involved twist to the game, which this game does. In fact, the twist just so happens to be the best part. The investigations that you perform in the game are fun and get your brain thinking. I was always actively looking forward to what was going to happen next. Game 7. This game was such a breath of fresh air after the previous mainline game we got. It's stunning what just adding one dimension to a game does to make everything seem brand new. I had a lot of fun going through this game and just seeing the developers experiment with this new environment and these new mechanics. The game is still very much rooted in the spirit of the series, but it does feel just new enough to not make you feel like you're retreading the same grassy fields or beating up the same innocent tree again. Game 8. Not as good as the first. I don't know how controversial that is, but I think I enjoyed the theming and characters of the first game more than this one. It's still good, and I like how it built on the story and world of the first game, but I just think the closed off setting of the original made for a more hopeless tone. That being said, this game does feature my favorite character of the entire series, who ends up dying anyway. Game 9. Nowadays, if I decide to put a game down, it's usually not because I can't, but because I don't want to. I'll stop playing because the mechanics rub me the wrong way, or because I'm just not having any fun. This year is one big exception to that because I've apparently regressed to a two-year-old brain when it comes to older games. I was having fun up until I got to the automotive plant dungeon and I just couldn't get past it. I tried having a full party of demons, and I tried having only one or two, but I just kept dying no matter what I did. At some point, even the save app on the computer thingy in the game just wasn't helping me. Game 10 like I said before, I like trying out RPGs that don't take place in a medieval fantasy world, and this game just knocked it out of the park for me with how experimental it felt. Based on the game's length and how it's structured, the gameplay doesn't get enough time to really be fleshed out into something deep, not counting optional bosses, but I don't think it needs to be. The game constantly changes its scenery and never overstays its welcome, but still ties everything together in the end in an incredibly satisfying way. Game 11, one of my favorite games of all time, and in my opinion, the best in the series. This latest playthrough is the fourth time I've played this game, and it only gets better every time I come back to it. It's one of those games that you're supposed to play and replay to not only discover the game's secrets, but also improve your skills. The better you get, the more fun the game gets, and it's fun to get better. The game never takes itself seriously either, instead opting to be stylish and kooky just for the sake of it. Overall, it's the complete package for me. Game 12. An incredibly solid title all around. I think the concepts this game introduces are pretty cool and while it isn't my favorite, I had a really good time with it. I just think it's really weird that a card playing kid with what seems to be an inverted pyramid around his neck gets so much focus when he really doesn't do anything other than serve as a vehicle for his taller friend. Game 13. I finally got around to finishing this game this year, as well as its DLC. I had actually stopped playing while I was in the final area of the game, the lava area, and I wasn't too far off from the final boss, so it's a wonder I hadn't finished it sooner. The entire concept for this game is odd, and I was pretty skeptical at first, but it's surprisingly fun, and not nearly as annoying as I thought it would be. My favorite part of this game was actually its DLC, which not only had better puzzles but also a set party, which I think left more room to create dynamic battles and experiment with a new banana mechanic.
Game 14. You know, I was liking this game, but I wasn't really feeling it until I got to belly, you know, wee oui, wee, oui, baguette fromage. That was when everything kicked into high gear and it just got really goofy. The chapter story was funny, the music was good, gameplay was fun, the devil thing at the end was the right kind of goofy that I want to see. It was exactly what I was looking for in this game. It was dumb fun. Game 15. At first I thought it was a bit weird to end the year off with this, but it's December so this actually fits quite a bit. I apparently played through a little bit of this game a long time ago, but I have no memory of it so I'm just counting this as my first full playthrough. It's still a very solid platformer and while I wish save points appeared at the beginning of each world instead of in the middle or near the end, I never found myself feeling frustrated with the game. The music's great, the 3DS graphics still look pretty decent, and it's overall just a fun SNES experience. Let's see the results. Game 1 was... Shin Megami Tensei 5. Game 2 was... Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Game 3 was... Deltarune Chapters 1 and 2. Game 4 was... Earthbound Beginnings. Game 5 was... Earthbound. Game 6 was... Danganronpa. Danganronpa. Trigger Happy Habit. Game 7 was... Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Game 8 was... Danganronpa. Danganronpa 2, Goodbye Despair. Game 9 was... Shin Megami Tensei, Devil Summoner, Soul Hackers. Game 10 was... Live Alive. Game 11 was... Bayonetta. Game 12 was... Bayonetta. Bayonetta 2. Game 13 was... Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Game 14 was... Bayonetta 3. Bayonetta! And game 15 was... Country. And here's the bonus question. 
What was my game song of the year? A. Megalomania from Live Alive. B. Let's Dance Boys third climax mix from Bayonetta 3. C. Welcome to the New World from Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Or D. Pollyanna, I Believe in You from the Mother Vocal Album. That's right, Megalomania. It was a close one this year because all of these were fantastic. Megalomania just inched it out by just a couple inches. 